Okay, this video is going to walk you through some special domain range answers, along with how to simplify them when there's infinity involved. All right, let's look at this example here. This is an example of a graph that works for everything except for one number. This is a hyperbola graph, and what makes a hyperbola graph special is it has every number work from the, negative, from the positive infinity over here and then shooting up, and then coming in from the negative infinity side going down. Every number works for x, except for when x equals 2, because if x equals 2, then it creates a zero in the denominator, which is undefined for an output, and you can't get an answer then. So that's why you see this vertical line here. This is called an asymptote. It's a dotted line the graph gets close to, but never becomes. Then, uh, the way I would describe that domain is by just simply saying my domain is going to be all the numbers, x, that are not equal to 2. Then for the range, if I'm going to think about the range, this range for the moment here, if you look at it, it goes all the way up and then all the way down, but it does skip the y output of 0. So if I cannot create a zero here, which could then hopefully make a zero for the whole fraction, that would be nice, but you can't. If you take one divided by something, you're going to always have something down here. So this graph never equals zero for the output. So the way we're going to write that answer is, is by simply saying that uh, the range is all the y values that are not equal to zero. That's it. This is an example of graphs that only have points. In this graph here, you see it have points at negative 1, 0, 0, negative 2, 1, 2, and 2, 3. When you're thinking about trying to write the answer for the domain, the domain is all the set, the set of all possible x values. So you go to each coordinate and say, well, this coordinate here has an x value of negative 1, this one here has an x value of 0, this one has an x value of 1, and this one has an x value of 2. As you do each one of those, you're going to write them out in this list right here, and you're done with the domain. The range is working from bottom to top. This one has a y output of negative 2, this one has a y output of 0, and this one has a y output of 2, and a y output of 3. Listing those off down here is all you have to do, and you're done writing the domain and range of this kind of graph. This example is just a side note. It's just to point out that when you have a domain that uh, has a point and then going off to an arrow like this that goes off to infinity, when you write your domain, it's going to be 1 is less than x, which is less than infinity. And then what you're going to notice then is when you write that answer out, you can take your eraser and just erase off the infinity in the last part and just leave the x is greater than 1 in your answer. So you can just write it out as x is greater than 1. In the other part, then, when you do the range coming from the bottom and coming in from the top, you're going to stop at 2, and you hit an error on the top here as well. So we say that this range goes from 2 up to positive infinity. And then what you do is you take the infinity part, erase that off, and leave it with just the y part where it says y is greater than 2, and write your answer just like that, y is greater than 2. That's the better way and more preferred way of what you're going to see on a standardized test of how you'd write your domain range of this kind of graph. Good luck. And now in this last example, you have an example that goes from infinity to infinity. Whenever you have a graph that has arrows going off to the left and arrows going off to the right, that means this graph covers every possible x value on our numbering system. So we then say in our interval, we say negative infinity is less than x, which is less than positive infinity. And then we just talked about the similar way to write these answers, answers is to remove the infinity symbol. So if you erase the negative and the positive infinities, you are all, all you're left with is just an x. But then if the way we show that it represents every possible number, we say x equals this little symbol for the real numbers, which is a capital R. Then we do the same exact thing for range. This has arrows going down and arrows going up. So we then say that every possible y value is covered. So then we say the interval goes from negative infinity less than y, which is less than positive infinity. By removing the infinity symbols, you're left with just a y. And then we say y equals the all real number symbol again. That's the more simplified way of writing these answers. Good luck.